right? So uh, I'm going to talk about like viewer RESTful API in Go. So how many of you uh, uh, have played with Go or great? And how many of you are familiar with Go? Awesome. So, <laughs> so just help me out. So I'm going to do some live coding today. Um, so um, just talk about this thing uh, sitting right in front of me. It's called Sphero. How many of you have know about Sphero, the robot boss? Okay, so <laughs> actually it's a boss that is programmable. Um, so, uh, and there's a Go binding. You can control uh, how it spring and how it turn, you know, change colors, that kind of thing. So uh, the Go binding is called GoBot. And uh, if you know, want to know more about this uh, robot, it's GoSphero.com. Um, so today, we're going to build an endpoint to control this uh, robot in Go. And uh, what we want to achieve in the end is to uh, have a curl command that uh, posts to your server saying change the color to red, for example. And we're going to play TDD the whole thing uh, using two approaches. One is uh, TDD and endpoint using the Go standard library. And then we're going to try the TDD the same endpoint using a, a pretty nice uh, Go library called Martini and then using some library to test it as well. Um, so those are the two links for the uh, library that we're going to use. But uh, yeah, if you miss it, I'm going to post these things online so that you can get a hold of it afterward. And if you have laptop, if you want to follow along, so this is the source. And then you... Uh, you just clone the repository and check out the uh, the API branch. Otherwise, just follow along with uh, me. All right. So that's all the slides I have. And first, maybe let's wake up this uh, robot and see how it works. So uh, I'm gonna <laughs> just just be safe. I'm gonna make a spring. Uh, for uh, 400 me uh, make it spring a little bit and then uh, after 10 seconds I will stop it I have some demo script here just try to connect to uh, uh, this is a Bluetooth actually uh, oh there's a Wi-Fi over there are you communicating with the robot? oh I'm communicating with the robot using uh, using Bluetooth so basically, Bluetooth. yeah, Bluetooth. So basically, this guy connect to my Mac. So I say, uh, I connect to this guy through Bluetooth, and I write to the socket for the Bluetooth socket. Okay. So. Uh, Oh, sure, definitely. How's that look? So I don't know why somehow there's a connection problem. Yes, sorry about that. I mean, technical issues. <laughs> you know, first go let me know. There's some uh, exception. I would say, okay, so this is normal. So now this time should work. So actually, it's spring on my on my uh, hand. So actually, it's spring. So just to show you that, like, this is not going crazy. I mean, things work. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop this. And uh, I'm going to demo what we want to end up achieving.
So uh, Okay, so I'm gonna start up the, the server so that uh, so you see it's spring in color. So that's what we want to achieve to change color. Okay, following what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bad idea anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is this script is uh, just basically a Ruby script that's uh, <sighs> crawling the endpoint that we're going to build and change the color of this uh, robot. All right? And uh, yeah, don't focus too much about, don't focus too much on the robot but uh, on the endpoint. So um, I can show you a little bit of the code that how this uh, robot work. Basically, uh, in here we just load the GoBot library. So import is uh, in Go that uh, import the library for those who don't know. And then I create a interface that's free role can uh, start, stop, and set uh, RGB. Uh, so RGB will be a, a integer of all this uh, of the integer they want to set. And then I have an implementation. So you can see that uh, we can we define an interface of Spiro, and then we define a struct that actually implements it. So uh, uh, when it starts, it basically get the adapter uh, for Spiro, and uh, and then actually run it. So nothing too interesting here. So it just basically follow the API from GoBot. And just just control the the ball, and and setting RGB basically just uh, right to the socket, just right to the Bluetooth socket with some uh, with some command to the to Sphero, All right? Does anyone can anyone see the code well? All right. And so. What we plan to do is actually implementing an endpoint so that we can control it, right? So in here we say create a free role, which is the, the struct that we just defined, and stop the free role after. Uh, so defer means after this uh, function uh, finish, call stop. So defer is a keyword in Go. And then I say I create another Go routine to uh, create a new API and then this serving our endpoint. Okay, so in here, nothing has been implemented yet. Um, so we have an API interface which needs to implement the, the route. Uh, and then there's a util method that we can use here. We can set RGB, which is basically uh, uh, convert an RGB string into, uh, into uh, what it expects in, uh, in the interface. So the start method blocks. Pardon? The start method. Yeah, the start method blocks main, blocks the main thread, and then we uh, have another thread. Well, you can call it thread or not. We have another Go routine um, to run the API server, and then somehow uh, in between the API server get the request and then somehow talk to uh, talk to Sphero, right? So you see new API here. I pass the Sphero instance into it so that we can get a whole Get a hold to that instance so that we can control it, right? Um, so I guess let's maybe uh, write a test just to uh, just to test it, right? So remember the endpoint that we want to get here. So we want to build something like okay. So just say put to this. Uh, 
uh, URL with the color. And then it will change the color to whatever the, the color that we uh, posted to. And so we're going to say, I don't know, test API. Since we're using standard library this time, just say test API standard, I don't know, uh, put, for example. Um, and then we create a request. Um, oh, okay, so actually, we need more uh, setup first. So now we have, uh, we want to, I'm planning to actually say, uh, make a put request, and then uh, I expect it to change color, right? Something like that. So in order to, for the put request to be made, we need to spawn up a test server, right? Um, Go actually has really good uh, uh, support for testing uh, API endpoints. Uh, then uh, I'm not gonna waste any time of uh, of uh, showing you the doc. I've just directly copy the code to set up the endpoint. So we haven't, now we need to implement something. So because HTTP test, which is a library that we can use in Go to test, create a test server. <coughs> so basically it spawn our local server with whatever route that you pass in. So now we need to somehow define our route. So this could be, I don't know, call it route for example. And uh, route, return an HTTP handler. Right, so and uh, we are not only need to start a server, we want to close it after it's done. So we would do something like set up standard and uh, defer so um, does anyone see what I'm doing here? So I just say, oh, okay, I set up a test standard, a uh, test server, and then after this test finish, I just close the server, right? And then, and then, okay, so we want to say new request, put, and the URL, and new at the last one. So what is the URL? The URL would be. Um, like RGB, I don't know, 255. So which will be the server dot URL? All right, my editor screwed up. <coughs> so what I just, so here I just say, okay, I wanna make a new request put. So it would be request or error. I want to make a, this is a URL, I want to make a request. I use uh, server.url. So here is actually some string interpolation. So I say uh, $s means uh, this URL will, uh, will somehow replace the string and uh, uh, percent %s, sorry, percent %s. So this is the URL that we want to put, and then we would say default client dot uh, do at least I would say uh, <coughs> so what I'm doing here I just this is actually make a uh, put request to uh,
Okay. 936 is not equal to null. Oh, yes. Great. Thanks. So does everything make sense so far? So I'm going to say before, okay, I start a test server, I'm going to say, okay, uh, make a request to this URL, and then I should expect no error happen at least. Yeah. So I'm going to run this. It actually passed. Interesting, it actually passed. <laughs> so, all right, so if there's no more message, well, there's no more, uh, if there's no error, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> then we will expect maybe we should like get a 200 back or maybe 201, something like accepted, for example, right? Say, okay. Status co equal to all one. Oh, not equal. Then I would say so I'm not only testing the error, but I'm now testing the uh, the status co to be two oh one at least. So now I want to test again. And okay, now, uh, okay, actually it failed. So I'm getting 404 back. So if you can see, I'm actually using a tmux section so that I can send my command to the other panel. So um, the test just run and say, okay, so I expect 201, but now it's getting 404. So that's that we need to at least get this test passing. And <coughs> maybe it's time to implement the route, right? And uh, for, the, for the route, sorry, I kind of lose track of. Yeah. Um, if I show you the Golang document about implementing a route, um, so no, not this one. Yeah, here. So, uh, so in order to implement a route your route need to uh, implement this interface. So which is the HTTP hand dot handler. So the handler should be uh, implemented serve HTTP method. Okay, so. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that. Um, assuming I have a type called API. <coughs> And then have a mess that call. Oops. I just basically copy these things. So I'm going to make this route return Why is it uh, complaining? Oh, we declare. Okay. So I'm going to return HTTP handler implementation, which is called API standard. So I have, uh, I meet the, so I have a service HTTP method, which has nothing. So this should, the test should still fail. 
which is oh, so now it actually passed. Interesting. So that means as long as you have a route defined and uh, go with think that uh, you will find a route, it will always return two hundred. So if I say right header, I'm gonna cheat, say 201, the test should be passing. Great. So when you say in your VIM, it runs the test? The no, I actually have a team, uh, command to send my, it's a, uh, I, I, uh, I set it to le leader GT, uh -huh. uh, GT stands for go test, it just uh, send the test, send the command, send this command. So it my command just say, oh, clear the screen, and if there's a script.test file, run the script.test file. Otherwise, you probably <coughs> don't see it. It just run go test. Uh, okay. So, yeah. so, so I just run letter GT. And you get team up to send it to that Yes, page. send it to that panel. Okay. All right? So it looks like now we cheated and uh, we get the test passed. But we want to go further. We're gonna fail the test again, so we're gonna say something about ah. So we want to actually see the color get set to zero, right? Um, so it would be nice to have something like like uh, I don't know API standard. Let's say I get a hold to instant uh, docs zero uh, <coughs> doc. Are equal. I don't know because we say uh, two five five here, so I would probably want to expect something like this. So API standard <coughs> docs zero dot ap dot r equal two five five. So let's do that. Uh, All right, so yeah, we actually have some compilation error here, it's telling us like uh, API standards of Sphero is doesn't uh, is not defined. So we're gonna say Sphero here, maybe get a hold to the Sphero instance, and and here oh so we initialize the API standards oh no we don't need to right so because we have the instance here already okay so actually we need to get a hold to the to the instance so instead of uh, So I instead of uh, saying uh, saying the route function, I just uh, create an instance and pass it to new server so that I can get a hold here, right? So still not compiling is telling me Sphero still not defined, but that's strange. Has no method. Well, we have to create an instance of APIs. Under yeah, we we did though here. <coughs> oh, so sorry, it's API. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, still not compounding because R is not defined, of course. So at this time, for testing a hardware stuff like this, we probably need to mock the the Sphero instance. So I can show you. Um, we have a 
sphere interface defined, we probably need a fix sphero in order to get the test going. So let's do that. So I say fix sphero. I need to. So it has a couple method. Uh, fix. Uh. So it has a star. We don't care what it does. Stop. Nothing. And maybe set RGB. We care about a little bit, but uh, not at this point yet. Um, but at least it definitely then our object that is u u n t u int eight, <coughs> right? Why is it still not? Okay, so because get a host to Sphero. <coughs> Yeah, so we might need to do a casting here. So the reason that it can't find R because uh, the interface zero doesn't define R, right? So we need to somehow cast this zeros to the fixed zero, and then <coughs> okay. Sorry. Fix Sphero doesn't implement Sphero. Uh, star, star fix Sphero. Star I think it does. Oh, no, it's, oh, it's yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So okay, great. Now we compile. So we're gonna do the same here. Yeah, we definitely can. So, you mean making that uh, the method here as an interface, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the the real Sphero implementation uh, won't let you uh, do that. So, um, which is fine. I mean, we could always refactor later. This seems like a decent solution so far. Um, so let's see what we get. Oops, we get a null point exception. Correct. Thanks. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna fix next. <laughs> so um, here we don't have a Sphero. We just say API standard, which which uh, doesn't have anything, right? Um, so we're gonna say fix Sphero, and then run the test again. Okay, now we getting the real t problem. So we expect to set it to two five five but we're getting back zero, which is the default value for an uh, integer. So now that means we need to uh, implement something in uh, set RGB <coughs> here. We at least need to say, uh, I don't know, S R equal R, right? To make sure like things get set. Um, still not set, why is that? Does anyone know? Even I say set. Well, you actually when you was creating fixed zero, you didn't supply any parameters. Yes, ex yes, that's correct. That's because in our endpoint we never set it. It's still <coughs> not setting it. Um, so we're gonna need to somehow set it, right? So um, does anyone have an idea how we do it? So someone, it's the test make a request, and then how do we? Looks like we need to pass the uh, the path, right? All right. <laughs> I bet that's a yes. <laughs> I need to get a sphere somewhere. I need to get a sphere somewhere. What do you mean? To, 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 a, to a side R, you need, you need to get a sphere. He's got a pointer to API. Handle. I I got a sphere oh, here. I got a sphere here. Oh, you are API stand. Okay, yeah. So I got a sphere here already. Yeah. Okay. So I think we need to somehow pass the uh, the URL. Yeah, what's your what's your REST API? I mean, what, how are you passing this this R? Is it coming as part of the URL? Or 
URL? Is it a get parameter? Yeah, yes. Okay, so I guess. I think the, the answer is yes. We want to do something like this, right? So we're going to say curl a put uh, request and then say RGB25500. So this is the params during the pass. Um, Exactly, great. So the next step, so we're going to get a hold to the path. So fortunately, like, uh, the Go standard library is so good that I already have that. So it's uh, called request URL.path. So presumably, we need to write some regex to pass this path, uh, which is already. <laughs> <laughs> just, just bear with me for a second. So there's a better way to do it, like using a library like Martini or like Gorera or something like that. So, uh, fortunately, I already have the, the code ready. <laughs> then we don't need to do anything. Can you string this dot split? Or slash and then comma? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can do, yeah. do that too. You can split with the last, last segment of the path, and then you do a regex. <coughs> you can totally do that. So, um, What's going on? Oh, okay, a docs zero. Uh, so what's going on again? What? Oh. <coughs> it's uh, you called it regex pq, and uh, above it's rgb regex. Oh, sorry. So this is kind of screwed up when I paste this thing. So it's gonna be <coughs> rgb regex, right? So I just paste in some magic that make it work. Actually, it's not too magic. So basically, I just say, all right, so I compile a regex. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match all the path that is RGB plus, you know, some digit, like, in the end. And I make sure the, the method is put. And then I match the path. If the path match, then I'm going to pass it and set RGB. And we, we spawn. 201 as we did before. Otherwise, just say, sorry, you're, you're looking for the wrong path. And what S set RGB does is basically a util function that I showed you earlier. Oh, so it's here. So, again, so nothing too magic, just basically convert the string to an integer and set the RGB. Can it? On there, I don't think we need the brackets around your date. Which one? The, the on line 20 around the type, you don't need the brackets. I'll need the bracket. I'm not sure I follow. So, uh, see where it says u in 8? It's in, it's in brackets. The message. You're doing a C style cast. You can you yeah. just treat it like a constructor. Yeah. Almost. Okay. Yeah, I can. <laughs> you don't need those. I don't need those, but can anyone spot one potentially dangerous thing happening here? Pardon? Sure, but uh, the, the error interface error. doesn't return any error either. Like when we define, like we can just find and forget. Yeah, so then you just return zeros for everything. Good point. I mean, that's yeah, that's a good point. So ideally, we should uh, at least uh, get back some error on whether get some feedback on whether the message gets sent or not. But can you spot something else? You're ignoring your error return noise. Uh, you mean this one? Well, that's no error. So I can show you the interface again. There's no error. So even the the, the GoBot uh, driver, it doesn't return any error. So it just <coughs> you just you just. I mean, you're talking about the error on uh, some STR con. Yeah. Yeah. The, the three times over, you ignore the error on STR Yeah. So you oh, okay. Zero, no matter what the value is. So right. That's, right. Yeah. That's so that's one. Cool. Th yes. Good. Good point. Yes. That's one. But there's one more. How about this casting? So I could literally go a thousand and like, or maybe something, you know, out of the unsigned, unsigned in eight. So there's a limit for uh, yeah. the number for you, unsigned in eight, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this potentially, this number can go really big and then you just cast it and we overflow. But if you, if you don't have the brackets, it will work. It will just take the bottom eight bits of it. No, it won't work because uh, uh, 
That's that you mean something like this, right? No, 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 no. no, no. Just no, just you, you uh, <laughs> see the braces around the word you and date. You can remove those. Yeah, those are redundant. <laughs> that one. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is that a convention to remove it? Yes. 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 Great. Now I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, like I said, there's potential uh, problem here. Is like the number can go really big, and then you try to, you know, cast it back to you int eight. But uh, we're gonna ignore it for now. So yeah, you see, like the test passed. Hooray! So now I do another one, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, g, g is uh, what is this? G is zero. Maybe I should say two five five because by default it's zero. We don't test anything, so maybe we should say g is is g doesn't define. So we need to. So, uh, we should give more tests and say this is G. So, of course, it will fail again because we haven't set it. So, we need to do Why is it failing again? In the fake, are you storing G and B? Right, yes, good. All right, so I think things are done. We pretty much, so maybe get a recap of what we have done. So we create one endpoint that pass the pass the the path, and then set RGB, and then uh, we also create a fixed zero so that make our test easier. And I think right now we can refactor all these things out, like at least this one, right? These things can go to another <coughs> file. So we still have the. I just do some refactoring. I move the the implementation from the test file to the API file, um, and test still pass. And we gonna try out these things on for real, I guess. So uh, we have a new API here. Now it return new. I think we can say, you know, API standard and pass in, give it a real zero. So it's complaining about it doesn't implement API because we haven't implemented the handler method. So the handler method, we actually did that. It's uh, pretty simple. It's just like what we did in test, just basically return itself, right? The API standard itself is already a handler which <coughs> implement this serve HTTP method. So, and then we have a little factory method that say um, create this API standard thing, give it a real zero, right? <coughs> and then we're gonna build a project and then run it. Yeah, sometimes 
uh, hardware are not really responsive. Have to be really patient. Okay, so now we started the server. Let's see. I want to change the red. Change it to something else. Ooh. And uh, maybe play a little rainbow. How about that? It keeps changing our color every second. Right? Can anyone see that? It's actually made with the Ruby script, right? Yeah, it's this Ruby script that, you know, arbitrarily RGB. Right? Can try it again. I think that's pretty much all I have. I wanted to show you the Martini code, but I think I'm actually out of time. So we still have two speakers coming up. Um, if you, if you want to see the Martini code, I have a repo. So uh, it's under my GitHub name. I call this Robot Gundam. So does anyone know about Gundam at all? Yeah. All right. So yeah. So if you yeah, so it has the, the code about Martini, and it's that, I can sh quickly show you that, actually. So uh, with Martini, you basically uh, have a cleaner interface. You don't need to write regex or whatever uh, to pass your path. You basically say, oh, I want to I create a Martini classic and say, oh, this is a put request. And then uh, the RGB will be whatever, and then start passing the stuff. And then the following code would be pretty much similar. All right, any any questions? <coughs> okay. Um, if an interface can you automatically create a fake instance, like if you want to create a fake zero, what you should then you have to write on the... Yeah, it's just, just like if you know about Java, it's kind of similar to Java, but uh, less, you know, less restricted than Java. You need to implement basically every method. All the method code has to be matched. Uh, but you don't have any libraries that would just automatically create? I think there are some libraries that actually can do that. Yeah. But then, yeah, they just create like the default implementation, and oh. then you can actually like take it to whatever you want. Uh, like GoMock, I don't remember. Something like that, I think that it was, yeah, it's present. All right, any more questions? I guess I'm going too fast so that... <laughs>